Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to church. There are several announcements I would like to bring to your attention on the screen. First of all, there is coffee time after the service. However, okay, and we'll get to the rest in a minute. Uh, youth group. We are meeting our joint Carol youth group at uh, 6.30 tomorrow at Carol. And um, I can give people rides from that one. We do have an official board meeting here at Hope uh, at 7 p.m. Here at Hope. Uh, next Sunday, the shoebox is due. So I think there's some at the back. If not, ask for us. Uh, so, and take them today so you can have them back next Sunday. Uh, for Samaritan's first shoeboxes. Choir practice is at 9.30 next Sunday, and the Ringling Grandmas are practicing at 8.45. Now, the Ringling Grandmas are also practicing. What did I say? Well, I'm wrong. It's right. Today too. So, if you would like to ring a bell for our Christmas concert on December 4th, uh, come and see Laura. I don't know if you absolutely have to be a grandma. I know Bert got submitted to doing it. Bert and I got recruited one time, and neither one of us are grandmas, so. Uh, uh, if, if you know of a grandma that wants to come, let me know. But if you don't, then we'll just go with who we get today. And that means you'll have more bells to ring. So, fine friends. Um, anyway, Laura's found the bells and she's found the music, so come for that. To, tonight, at 7 p.m., there's a concert at St. John's Anglican Church uh, on the theme of Remembrance Day. And Laura, who's playing besides you? Uh, both Dolce, uh, so that's Heather Morwood and uh, Lorraine Deckers, Jennifer Lee, myself, and then Mel Bonez and Richard Crump. So, part of the station crew with friends are going to be putting on a concert. Is it about an hour long? Yeah, a little over. A little over. And that is, does it cost anything no, to get there? Donations to the church. Free will offering. It's a free will offering for, to the church. All right. So, shoeboxes again are due next week. Now, we're planning. Advent is coming quickly. There is a church decorating party on Friday, November 25th. Take note of that. Sunday, November 27th, is a white gift for us. So if you'd like to make donations to Christmas for everyone, either money or gifts. And according to the announcement at Caro, they do gifts from children up to the age 16. And they offer short gifts for people who are 12 to 16. And they actually suggested gift cards might be a good idea. Hey! Do you know anyone who uh, has a fun script program with gift cards? It might be due today, if you want to come back by then. Um, we could nerf that out for you. We could find you uh, the piece of paper. Um, and then Advent Music Night, also on Sunday, November 27th, is at the Opera Hall at 5.30 potluck dinner, and then a Christmas concert follow -up. And a good time will be had by all. And then on December 4th is our old fashioned Christmas concert at 6 30. December 10th is the Owl December Verse Parade. December 24th is our Christmas Eve service at 8 p.m. here. And Sunday morning on Christmas Day, 10 30. Carol will not have a service, but anybody who wants to, there'll be a uh, Christmas Day service here at 10 30. Because that's Sunday. I've run out of announcements. Uh, the other one, and I should mention, anybody who's on the Ministry of Personnel Committee, so that's Maryland, and uh, we're supposed to try and meet before, well, before Wednesday, actually, so I've been talking to Heather, um, and we'll ch I'll chat after the service. More details about that. All right, if there's no other announcements, let's remain seated as we sing our call to worship together.
Our Lord and our God, we live in a world where many people seem to want to follow their own ways and wills. And we know that this creates messiness because it ultimately leads to conflict as other people might want to do things different than we do. And so, Lord, these conflicts in more extreme cases even lead to wars. Lord, on this Saturday before Remembrance Day, as we gather here in your presence to be taught and shaped, we ask that you would help us to give up doing our will and seeking your will. And then as we learn your true way of living, you would free us from sin and enable us to live more fruitful lives. God, we know as we celebrate Remembrance Day that some too often we've had to go to war because we haven't been able to avoid conflict. And so, Lord, we pray for peace as we remember those who have laid down their lives. And God, we thank you not only for those that have been willing to serve, but for some really good news we've heard this week from the youth group, group getting lots of food for the food bank, to Maya Lerbass's procedure that seems to be a success. We thank you that she's home. We pray that you continue to bless her. We thank you as well that Jason's got a co-op with his uh, computer programming pro uh, program at the Fanshawe College Library. We thank you for all those who volunteered and worked so diligently to pull off the turkey supper. And Lord, for these and so many other blessings, we give you thanks and praise. And yet, Lord, we admit that being surrounded by people who think and seek the, to do their own thing rather than yours makes it harder to be faithful because it means that we stand out as different. And that's sometimes hard. So forgive us for the times when we don't seek first your kingdom and are the kind of peacemakers you've called us to be. Forgive us for these sins and for any other sins and shortcomings that come to mind. Lord, hear our silent prayers of confession. Loving God, we thank you for your grace and forgiveness that allows us to come to you as we are, and your love and the Holy Spirit that helps us to change and grow into the people you want us to be. Continue the good work you've begun in each of us and together as a church. We ask in Jesus' strong name. Amen. And we're going to sing our opening hymn, which is kind of a prayer. It's an old song called Let There Be Peace. On earth. And I'm Wayne is meeting the same. I will make room for Wayne. Well, there's two verses. So you want to do both verses twice? So do the whole thing and then go back and do it again. Okay. Let's stand and sing.
saying? Peace by Richard Nichols. And I'm going to turn my mic off. So, okay.
that we might bring glory to you and fruitfulness to your church. Amen. <laughs> It is story time, so could I help borrow you two to come on out? Hey, my out and Luke, how's it going? Hey, is there anything special happening this week? You got a kid? That was last week, wasn't it? Are you getting it? Yesterday, does it have a name? And does Lynch get along with your dog? And all of the excitement. But that's not what's special about me this week. In, look at people. Are they wearing anything you need? Oh, yeah, what is it, Luke? Well, yes, we're wearing copies, which reminds us what's coming up. Okay. Remembrance Day, what are we supposed to remember?
Now the question is, if we picked out 10 people, Mavis, could you make, and what's 60 divided by 10? Six. So if I said, Mavis, could you go home and make six pies in four hours or five hours, could you? Absolutely not. Could anybody here make six pies in, in four hours or five hours? Okay, so she's a little bad. She's special. <laughs> That's probably good too. Six and four hours. On their own. Yeah. Did I do the math right? Yeah. It, no. No, I'm sorry. It would be six uh, six yeah, six hours over four hours. You can do that, it's easy. So it's easier than you working together? To do sixty? Oh, oh you didn't say it was easier. Yeah. So why would bringing people together would be easier and faster? Pardon? More help. And the people who are really good at making the dough, Shirley Sinclair, she makes the dough. The people who are really good at, at, at rolling the pie, the pie dough out and putting the crust in and then putting it together, they do that. And the problem is sometimes they be, let me do peeling of apples. I peel potatoes all the time. I'm really good at peeling apples. I'm fast at that. They did try giving me a different job though. It was putting them in the plastic bags and carrying them over to the freezer. <coughs> there was an incident. Can you guess what happened? I dropped one. It sort of dented. And what does a freshly made pie do when you turn it sideways? It becomes unbalanced. It became purchased by the Green family. We took it home. Laura took the unbalanced part and cut into the crust 58 for my birthday, and it became my birthday pie. And it was really good. But, why do I tell you? The point is, if we do what we're really good at, and we work together, we can accomplish a lot more. And so as we think about conflict and Remembrance Day, Peace and harmony is when we voluntarily work together. We know this with the turkey salad. We were able to feed, what, about 280 people, something like that? And it happened because we had enough people working together. So when we listen to God and figure out what we're good at and do that, we are more fruitful in our lives. So let's pray. If everyone could repeat after me. Dear God, Help us to give up trying to find our own way. Help us to learn to listen to you and follow you and work together and be more fruitful. Amen. Alright. And now we're going to say the Lord's Prayer together with everybody. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now we're going to sing a song.
our scripture reading today. Today's first scripture is taken from Matthew 5, verses 1 to 9. The Beatitudes. Now when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Our next scripture is taken from John 8, verses 31 to 36. The children of Abraham. To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I will tell you, I'll tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham, Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I have that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself, the children of the devil. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I, am, I came from God, and now I am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You will to your father the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was, he was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? And our song is Psalm 22, verses 1 to 9. Jesus 
wants us to grow and cultivate, we have skipped the pure in spirit, which we'll look at next week, and focused on blessing the pacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. So that this would correspond with Remembrance Day Sunday. Have you noticed that we're living in a time when people do not seem to be living at peace? There is either outright war like between Ukraine and uh, Russia, or there is a constant culture war going on where people are demonizing the other side. And whenever, as a student of history, we see people dividing the world in terms of oppressed and oppressor, good guys and bad guys, this leads, it seems, to demonizing one another. But as disciples of Jesus, we are not allowed to demonize our enemies. We have to pray for them and love them. Why? Because all human beings are spiritually poor and sinful. We all need God's forgiveness and help. And so we must all, we must look to act all of our neighbors as fellow sin sinners we are to love. Now this love doesn't necessarily mean we always agree, but it does mean we will always seek our neighbors best. And as such, we are called by Jesus to help each other to acknowledge our need for help. And as I was telling the kids, the biblical idea of peace and shalom is not just an absence of violence, but it's actually a way of learning to live in harmony with each other and working together to be more fruitful. So I want us to think about how it is that we can go about becoming peacemakers. And the first thing is, a peacemaker is never coercive, but always persuasive. Civilization only works well and is fruitful when people voluntarily work together. How many people here remember former uh, um, agricultural minister of the federal government, a guy by the name of Eugene Whale? The older folks, well, he used to wear a nice green hat, did he farm down near Tilbury, I believe. We had to speak at the Rotary Blank Bank here in Alveston, didn't we? Okay, so you were there, I was there. Let's see if I get my story pretty well close. Because I believe you told the story of having Mikhail Gorbachev come and visit his farm. And he said that as Gorbachev was getting tours of farms in southwestern Ontario, he said something to the effect, and I, this is not word for word accurate, but how do you make your farmers work so hard? implying they were having trouble getting their Soviet farmers to work as hard. And Whalen answers something like the fact, we don't make anybody do anything. They own their farm, they get the fruit of their labor. Unlike in your system where everybody gets paid regardless of the fruitfulness of your farm, people here experience the fruits of their successes or the challenges of their failures. We don't need to motivate the farmers, they do it themselves. Now whether Whalen realized it or not, I think he was acting a little bit like a peacemaker. Helping Gorbachev come to understand something that was good and right and true. And this helped him to live in harmony with, well, reality. And while Remembrance Day is coming up for, for us, we Christians have always had an uncomfortable relationship with war. War is never a good thing. Even a just war is all means that we only fight to restrain evil and it's a sign of a failure of persuasion. Leading up to World War II, Allied leaders exhausted every possible way of trying to pers persuade Adolf Hitler to stop invading neighbors, taking over neighboring countries, and to give up on his idea of Aryan superiority. 
When he refused to stop, force was only a last resort. Interestingly, I think, I think Hitler actually had a chance to change his mind, and he refused to. Do you remember 1936? What happened in Berlin in 1936? Anyone remember? Olympics. The Olympics. Do you remember who won the most medals of the 1936 Olympics? <laughs> Jesse Owens. A black American. When he won his four medals in long jump, uh, 100 meters, 200 meters, and 4 by 100 meter relay, uh, he won more medals than anyone else. And normally when medal winners won, Hitler was there and shake their hands. If you know the story, Hitler left the stadium rather than shake Jesse Owens' hand. There was an opportunity there. He could have said and realized, hey, your vision is not in touch with reality. But he refused. And because he refused, it led to an ultimate world war. So we do not, pers we persuade people, force is only used as a last resort. The second thing is, peacemakers, um, Understand that truth sets us free, and that we don't aren't smart enough to figure out the truth on our own, but we get it from God. To the Jews who believed in him, Jesus said, You hold to my teachings. You if you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. But the Jews began to argue with him. For descendants of Abraham, we've never been enslaved, to which Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. And in their heart of hearts, everyone knew that they weren't perfect. Everyone knew they missed the mark, they'd fall short. And the most insidious kind of enslavement is it's enslavement to our own passions and desires, things we like, like, I like apple pie too much. In moderation, it's fine. But when we are not in control, but our passions and desires are controlled, we are slaves to sin. And it was Adam and Eve who set themselves up trying to be like God, knowing good and evil. That was the original kind of sin that we talk about. And if every individual seeks to go and live by his or her own truth, what happens? The stronger one gets to force it on everybody else. That kind of a law of jungle is no way to build a civilization. Because the people who are being coerced Never give their best or work their hardest. Peacemakers do not only do not use coercion, but we look to God for the best, most fruitful way to live. And then when we let God lead us, interestingly, it starts to grow a community of cooperation and harmony. A small example, we fed around just under 300 people. It took a high level of peaceful cooperation that came from each of us voluntarily letting the people be in charge who knew what they were doing best. I was not in charge of cooking the turkeys. That is really good. Could I set up tables? Absolutely. Could I help do dishes? Absolutely. And what's interesting is that when each person does what they're best at and we don't constantly question what we're asked to do, everybody works more cooperatively. Now don't misunderstand me. That doesn't mean we shouldn't ask questions. Scripture says, take, test all things and hold fast to that which is true. But if you have somebody in charge that you know and trust knows what they're talking about, don't be questioning them all the time, resisting. Just let trust them and live and cooperate. As I said earlier about the Carol Pies, they did 60 pies on Friday by combining their efforts. This is why Henry Ford could use an assembly line for, to produce cheaper, reliable cars than anyone else and having all the individual shop people work together on one car at a time. You see, 
Peacemakers will, over time, be more fruitful with cooperative community, co voluntarily cooperation. And as we do that, we set an example to the world. Have we noticed that people aren't cooperating very well these days? People aren't listening very well these days? It's my way or the highway? Now, does that mean that Christian churches never have fights or disagreements? Oh, yeah, they do. But if we're being faithful to Jesus, the way we disagree is different. Because it's not my way or the highway. It is we're all seeking God's way. And we're seeking the Lord's will. And if we're practicing our faith effectively, that makes it very different. Because none of us are always in charge. Sometimes there might be an area where one of us can be in charge of, because we know that really well. And there's another area that other people are in charge. So around here, there's music get kind of led by Laura and Teresa and people like that. Yes! But we have other people who are in charge in the kitchen. We have other people in charge of youth groups or with other areas of the church. And as we each do what we're best and gifted at, that's when the fruitfulness happens. So what does this have to do with Remembrance Day? Well, conflict and war happen when nobody, everybody stops listening and stops being teachable. And so first, as peacemakers, we, we are persuasive, not coercive. We then recognize that we make Jesus Lord, and as everyone follows Jesus, we go up and go together and work together and cooperate. And then as we follow Jesus, cooperation just develops. And we should never underestimate the way that we pull off a turkey supper or the way that the Carol Church makes all these pies isn't a witness to the world around us that, you know what? Doing do things God's way is more fruitful. So in conclusion, peacemakers, we don't seek our own will, but God's truth. And that truth sets us free from being enslaved to our false understandings. And we never coerce our neighbors, but we persuade them by listening and understanding and try to invite people to voluntarily follow Jesus with us. And as we do that, a cooperative community just naturally grows. You know what, folks? It's worth being a peacemaker. It takes way less stress. It takes way less energy, although, yes, it takes sometimes everything we have to do it, but it's way better than fighting with everybody around us. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we know that we are not smart enough to know the truth. We are spiritually poor. So please, free us from our own misunderstandings. Teach us your truth that will set us free. And then as we love and listen to people around us, let us persuade and never coerce. And as we all learn to follow you slowly over time, a cooperative community is built. That is voluntarily followed up, comes together. Work such a thing in us individually and in our churches together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we're going to continue to worship God. We're going to have a communion hymn, King of All the Nations. Now, I think there are five verses. We're not singing all five. We're going to sing one, three, and five. And if those who are serving communion can come forward during the singing of the last one.
remembrance of me. In the same way, we will serve to you some uh, grape juice and just hold on to it and get the lids off. Going on 
in our provincial government and with the EA secretaries and custodians. God, we pray that you would work in people's hearts and minds, that there would be a wise and fair solution to this where, where it's not a winner take all. Lord, just bring and change hearts and minds that need to be changed in that situation. We continue to pray for Maya as she's recovering from her, her treatment that seems to be successful. And we pray for so many others who might be dealing with health problems. Lord, you know the situations they are. In fact, even though we've prayed for lots of individuals, there are more that we can even mention. So in the silence of this moment, we lift you any other concerns that weigh heavy upon our hearts and minds. Lord, hear our silent prayer. Benediction. 